Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back. Uh, I got a question on one of my videos. It was the collect user feedback Google Forms and email video. Uh, and so in that video, we talked about how from our, your Unity app, you can collect data from the users in your app if they want to fill out a form or something and send that directly into a Google Sheet for you to process. And uh, this guy, Jonathan, uh, had a question for my video, which is that if we can send data up, to a Google Sheet, can we also download it? Can we send data in the other direction? And the answer, Jonathan, is hell yeah. In this video, we're gonna be going over an example of how to do just that, and I'm gonna provide you with all the code necessary in order to make that happen. So first, I wanna show you a simple example, uh, which I've actually used in my own games where I needed to get this done. What you see here is a, a sheet of translations where the left column of English has all the text in a certain language and then the right columns will have what's supposed to be the translation of the text for any given row in the respective languages. So for example, um, one capsule in English is supposed to be uh, one capsula in Spanish, okay? And I haven't checked all these. But that's the basic idea, and it's actually a Google Sheet very much like this, which we use to translate No Stranger. So I could use that, uh, I could open that up right now. But basically, uh, No Stranger is a game that I made, um, and we quickly had a problem on our hands where we had over uh, a million downloads in many different countries, and we couldn't afford to hire translators. And so what we did was we created this Google Sheet where our uh, fans could come and help us translate the game. And they've done exactly that, translating thousands of different translations of our entire game. And so that was a huge uh, benefit for us, but we also ran into a problem recently because of that. And the situation was that our Portuguese translation was incorrect. So there was a problem with the Portuguese translation and what that required was that we needed to send a full update to our game on iOS, which you know is going to take a few days because Apple's quite difficult, and we also needed to do a full update on Android. And so I was thinking, is there a better way? I mean, we have this Google Sheet which is created here, and what I was manually doing was clicking File, Download a CSV, and then including the CSV in my game. Uh, CSV is short for Commerce Separated Value. But if I'm just downloading it, couldn't my game do the same exact thing? And the answer is yes. We're going to cover a way in which, just like I can go here, click File, Download, uh, CSV, and then import that into my game, you're going to be able to do the same exact thing. And we'll talk about how to parse it as well. I'm making a smaller app, which I think will be a little bit better to explain for the FIP. And so this is actually the sheet which we'll be using today. There's one last thing, a little bit of a, a nuance I want to point out, and it's that in the top left cell, I actually, instead of just having the text English, I have the text two equals English. And so what that two equals denotes is what version this translation is. So when I update the sheet, I just change this to three equals or something like that, okay? And so that just increments the versions, and I do that so I have a way to internally keep track uh, when somebody gives me a bug report or something, I know what version they were looking at. Um, so that's how I tie it in. All right, so let's jump into Unity and take a peek at this. Uh, I don't have anything to really show you in the scene view, so I could close these. Um, yeah, let's just pull this up or something. Oh, we got some Unity lag going on here. I want you to just look at these uh, at this console log here. So basically, I play the game, and we're gonna see a number of things happen here. We're going to download the data. So you're gonna see download success here. Then we're going to read in the data. So this is the full text, so you'll see that it starts with that three equals, I just changed it, so it's live. And then you'll also see that it explicitly uh, denotes what data version it downloaded. So you can see here it's data version three is what we downloaded. So now let's cover the scripts that are gonna make that happen. Uh, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Or before I do, let me just say that there's three scripts we're gonna go through. Loader, which I could close for now. We're gonna have this script called the loader, which is gonna manage the download process. It also has the after download and then the actual process data uh, methods. So this is just covering, um, it's sort of a manager which is allowing us to download it and then it's going to be really, this class is really focused on parsing the data, so pulling it out of that comma-separated value format. I have a separate um, CS file here, which is the static class CSV downloader, and this is just comprised of the method download data, and that's going to be completely dedicated to downloading the data. So I split it up for you, uh, just because I thought it would be easier to understand that way. 
And then the last is I created a very small public class, which is going to be, uh, I'm kind of using it more like a struct. But what this has is basically um, a bucket for us to throw our data into. So it's just a way for us to handle this data once we download it. So the, the paradigm which I settled upon was I have a string to string array dictionary where the string is the English text and then the, um, the values for that key are basically uh, all the different translations in a, just one big array. And the Spanish text will always be um, in the same index no matter what the key is. So what that means is if I know the Spanish text is the zeroth index of the array, I just take the English text and I say, give me the value of the zeroth index and that's going to always return me the Spanish text. And so how do I know that Spanish is going to be the zeroth index? Well, that's what this other um, structure here, this dictionary language indices does. So what this would look like from a client perspective is, hi, I'm using the German language. What index should I use? So you're going to ask that of language indices. They're going to say, hey, the German index is index number one within this array. And then you say, OK, great. I have the text that is a username. I'm going to put it into the term translations dictionary. That's the key. What's the value? It's going to be every single way that you could spell username in all these different languages. And then I know German text is the first index, so I grab the first one. OK, so that's the term data sheet. We won't need to cover it in any more depth, but I think it's just important to see how I've gone about uh, structuring this data. Um, and we're actually going to do a different video, I think, on translations at some point in the future. But let's get to the important part, which is the CSV downloader. So it's so we have this load method here, which is simply going to start a coroutine for the CSV downloader. So now we can go into the CSV downloader to just break down what's going on here. The first thing to understand is that every Google Sheet has a unique doc ID. Okay, and that's actually the most important thing that we're going to need to grab from our online sheet. And so in order to do that, you go here into your, um, your document and you want to find the text that lies after this slash D and yet before the slash edit. Okay, so for me, my doc ID would be 1x1. And so that's exactly what I'm going to paste into this item here. Okay, so this is the doc ID 1x1. And what I can do actually is append a slash export question mark format equals CSV. And I'll zoom in on that a little bit. But that exact text is what's going to tell the URL we want to download this. And so just uh, for a little bit of fun, you could actually um, paste this into your, um, your browser directly. And so if you do that, so for example, if I paste this in here and then I replace the doc ID we can do manually what the computer is going to do for us. So if I just paste this in right here, and so we have the doc ID, but we have export. I push enter. What that's going to do is it's going to, oh, you didn't see it. Sorry, I'm too far zoomed in. Excuse me. Let's pretend we're going to do it for the first time. Here we go. We're going to push enter. And down here, you're going to see that you just downloaded the CSV. So OK, that's exactly what we're doing. We're just doing it um, by code. So here we go. We're in the I enumerator here. We're going to say download data. Um, we're going to create a Unity web request, which is going to request this URL, which we just created using that Google Sheet ID. And what's wonderful is even if you, um, you make changes to that uh, document, it's not going to change the document ID, which, which is very helpful for us. One note, though, you probably are going to need to make sure that the document uh, can be shared. So you want to go in here, click share, and just click anyone can view and copy that a few times just so it is shareable. Uh, that's kind of important because if it's a private document, you won't be able to share it. OK, wonderful. And then the rest of this text here just uh, checks whether or not we have an error on our hands. And if not, we parse out the version section so we can determine what the version was. That's that whole two equals, which we changed to three equals in the very beginning of the document. And then the other thing that I do is I actually save the text. So I take the string and I save it into my player prefs here. And um, uh, you know that's, that's a stylistic choice. But uh, the reason why I do that is if later on we're not able to get a stable download, what we can do is we can just refer to the player prefs um, 
and, and, and pull in the last data we were able to download. So I, I feel like it's useful in that case because you never know if someone's going to turn on airplane mode, you don't want your game to break necessarily. Once we finished, we say on completed, so we call this, uh, this delegate which we were passed, or this, uh, this system action, and the text which we're going to pass in is actually the data itself. So let's return to loader, and you're going to see that after download is where we go, after we've made the download, pretty, uh, pretty uh, straightforward in that sense. We have a little bit of error checking to determine if the data return was null, and if not, we start our coroutine, which is going to process the data. Okay, and then after data processing, we go to after process data. So after process data, I, I don't really have a lot written there. Um, you might find that, that there's more to do there, but for me, it's kind of an empty method. However, process data is where things get interesting. Now, I have some code commented out here because I wanted to show you guys that you actually can have basically a, a CSV in your game as a backup. So within your resources folder, uh, so this would be under assets, resources, and if you don't have a folder, you can make one, you can actually create a CSV and you can have it there in your app just in case the download doesn't work. So like I said, you could have it saved as a string or what you could do is you can manually at this point, if your data download broke or, or you wanna just use the local version, you can actually just load um, the a CSV as a text asset. And so that's what I'm doing here. If the CSV was named DB, then this would function properly. And that's exactly what I do in a, a version of No Stranger. So I just wanna show you that as an optional, uh, another option basically. And so within this process data enumerator, what we're basically doing is looking at each line and then each entry within a line. And we're just computing it in such a way that we can then allow you to process the data however you want. So we're pulling it essentially out of that CSV format. So within process data, it's going to be doing a, a bunch of you know arithmetic to, to figure out what the different lines are. There's a few items of this algorithm which I want to call out, but I won't go through it in a line by line. Um, just one thing I want to mention though is that the line ending character is different on iOS devices. So this is a gotcha to look out for. If it's iOS, the devices uh, or the CSVs are going to be ended with a slash n on each new line. Um, however, on the other ones, it's going to be slash r slash n, right? Carriage return new line. And so that's just something to be aware of. Because of that, we have to be conscious of how the lines are being ended. So I do have a check here within utils.ios. Um, so you're not going to have this code, so I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, but, but basically it's saying, um, well, it's saying is not Android and we're using the pound defines here to check for an iOS system. And this is just a little utils class that, that I kind of carry with me between projects for various little methods like that. Wonderful. So um, the way that CSVs work when they're downloaded from Google is uh, they have quotes to separate the different lines and then I believe they have commas for, for each of the different values. So um, I believe this code will function without a problem if you have commas in your data, but if there are quotation marks in your data, you may run into some issues. So you may have to uh, adjust this algorithm, and, and so that's why I'm providing it to you in full if you have those sort of uh, edge cases, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, and then what I decide is once I have a full line created, I call this method called process line. And so this method is one you're going to have to implement on your own, okay? so. Process line really does depend on whatever your implementation is, however you want to uh, really handle this data. And what it's going to return to you is the line index, as well as a, sh uh, a list of all the different elements within that line. So for example, if I were to open up this, uh, this document here, the first index would just have all of these texts, okay? So it would say English, comma, Spanish, comma, Arabic, comma, Chinese, okay? Um, then the second line would say one comma t uh, one comma uh, whatever this is in Arabic probably one right uh, but basically that's how it works okay so it sends you all the different items uh, line by line um, and so you just need to create a method here that processes it however you would like and so I'll show you the implementation that I have for my translations which is basically filling in that structure which I showed you earlier um, so basically here I'm checking if the current line is zero where I have a special case because if you can recall from my example here, zero is where I have the uh, 
the titles of the languages, not the, the translations themselves. So I have a little bit of a, a, special, uh, a special work that I will do in that case. Otherwise, if it's, um, uh, if it's uh, not zero, then what I'm going to do is uh, slowly fill in the different uh, arrays for all the different translations that I have for any given term. I have some checks in here to make sure I don't see any term twice or something like that. And then I also have concerns for um, basically if, if we, you know, just some basic error checking, which I won't bore you over. But um, that's, the, that's the full uh, loader process. And then as I said, after we do the full process data, we're going to call this method called after process data. And uh, I have an error message here, but I actually don't have anything in the success case. There, there's no work that I have being done at that point. Um, but for you, that might be a good point to, um, well, I don't know, well, whatever it is you want, right? Um, I will note that uh, I have a, uh, I have a little bit of an extra work which I've included here, but I haven't made use of in this particular implementation, though it is a major part of the, uh, of the no stranger implementation which is that I have this progress meter, which I slowly increment. So as I'm going through the different lines, I update this progress increment to tell uh, perhaps a loading screen what percent of the way I am completed with this, uh, with this uh, process. So if I open up my video game, No Stranger, right now, I'd like to show you that in action. So let's see what we have here. If I pull up No Stranger, you'll see that the video game will load and it will actually have a loading bar at the bottom Oh man, that's, and so it's saying, so sorry, that went by really fast and obviously this is not a good way to show it, but just in case you're interested of what that looks like in action, you'll see that as the game is loading in the beginning, it's actually loading in that CSV. So I print what percent it is completed. Okay, so you see it went 70, 90. I know, I know it was it was shitty resolution, but basically um, that's just one way you could do it. Okay, so this progress meter is kind of a kickback and what it's doing is it's going to, I believe, yield for a frame. Every uh, K lines between updates, it's going to yield. Um, it's going to take a moment so you can just update that loading screen if you desire to. If not, we, we, I don't actually have a loading screen for this for this particular iteration of the game. Um, There's a different game that doesn't have one, so it's, it's not an issue. But for your game, you might want to consider it, especially for low-end devices. Um, because it does take a long time to load. So I'm finding that the loading time is a little bit long for uh, the low-end devices, and so that's why it's a tremendous boon to save the data uh, rather than downloading it from the internet every time. Okay, so that concludes this video. I'm going to have all the code included in the description as always, so you could check it out there if you're interested in implementing this, and if you do, let me know how it goes. If you would like to have a video similar to this one, please let me know. Uh, this video, as you saw, was a response to Jonathan's question, but if you have a question and you'd like to know how to make something like this in your game or uh, something similar, I'd be more than happy to share with you how to make um, uh, some, of these, uh, some of these coding solutions, okay? So thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, do please consider subscribing or leaving a like. I would very much appreciate it. Thank you.